everyone i'm back with another video and today i figured that since i haven't read anything for a while i'll pull out some of my uh older reads from before and so i figured okay let's do some heta uma works so i pulled up a couple of heta uma works uh, that i want to go through today in this video um but to start off with oh i'll actually show them first so we've got uh segi tai by Goto Yuka. We've got Jacaranda by Shiriagari Kotobuki. And we've got Tarako Cream by Kazuhiro Watanabe. So we'll start off with Goto Yuka because here we've got um, her work titled Segitai, which means Justice Core, which ran for four volumes and is her only series. Tanko Bon series at the moment. Um, so this series here, uh, well, number one, let me show them off. The covers are absolutely amazing. These rainbow covers are pretty iconic. And here we've got volumes three and four. Here's the back, amazing stuff. So Seigitai is Goto Yuka's only Tanko Bon collected work at the moment. She is serializing a new work after I think 10 years or so called uh, Komori Otoko, which means Batman. Um, but this first volume was released by Seirin Kogeisha in 2005. And the last volume, volume four, which I haven't read yet, was released in 2011. So it was quite a long running series. And it was serialized in X as well. But out of the three volume, uh, four volumes, I've read the first three. But let's just go through and flick through these. So Segi Tai is actually super fun. I really love this series. If you love Heta Uma, then Segi Tai would probably be your thing. So essentially what we have here is um, the story follows the Justice Call on the right. Here are some of the characters. You got Motoko, Kezuru, Chip, Hara, Machiko, Suzy, the taxi driver, and Fuchi. And it's pretty much like an adventure of the week type of story. You have some um, bad guys that the Justice Call run into. And so the story starts off with just Motoko, a normal girl who's on... Uh, he like finds a... Uh, was it finds like an underground bunker thing and finds Kezuru in there and she sort of displays her strength that sort of thing and pretty much just gets recruited into the justice court and it starts off with some guy they find on the train who appears to have a bomb and Kezuru follows him tries to capture him and I love the like the action in this in the series. Goto Yuka draws it so well. It's like it's so funny the way she draws the the faces. Super like basic, no detail at all. But I think that adds to the whole appeal of it. And I mean that is kind of Heta Uma in general as well. So this series is a gag series. So we've got some action, but it is comedic with the way these characters fight and go into and encounter weird situations like this random lady here who's got a knife and Motoko has to go and fight her but I seriously love this art a lot I wish well hopefully with uh, Komori Otoko um, which is currently publishing I think there's only two chapters out at the moment in X hopefully that gets put into a Tankobon because I really miss um, seeing new stuff from Goto Yuka. I love these pages as well, these little chapter pages. Pretty detailed. But yeah, every every volume has a couple of different um, different like bad guys that they encounter, and you see a lot more of the Justice Corps and all the different characters because there's a bunch of them in there. This one here, uh, this page is actually uh, was printed as a, a poster by Le Denier Cree, who I believe printed it for the Heta Uma um, exhibition they had. 
So the the Gara and Heta Uma exhibition, which featured people like Goto Yuka, Hanawa Kazuichi, Takashi Nemoto, a lot, all those people. This certain page here was printed in green. I can put that in the description. It looks so cool. But that was for an exhibition maybe more than 10 years ago now, something like that. But yeah, that was the first volume of Heta, no, not Heta Uma, of Segi Tai. And pretty much getting into the, the rest of the volumes, it is the same sort of formula. More bad guys get introduced to more of the uh, Justice Calls character, like Sammy this alien guy and they go and fight weird bad guys sometimes they're human sometimes they're not this woman from my memory was like she was taking care of this fish who wants to either take care take over the world or take over someone they fight here really weird scenarios and very funny drawings but especially with like the, the text in the series as well isn't too complicated either there's not much text it's very like slapstick you know focused on the visuals the action the fights simple but very addicting but I feel like if you like Heta Uma then Segi Tai would be a great read Although it hasn't been translated into any other language. So Segitai hasn't been translated into anything, uh, unfortunately, any other languages. So here we've got, we're getting like a fight underwater. Um, Kezuru and Motoko are chasing this talking fish underground. Sammy also joins in. I think Fuchi also joins in as well. Oh man, the art is super addicting. I believe they get infected by something. Oh, this one was so crazy. So like, um, they follow the fish and then something happens where they, th the sea splits. Some, this person here, I forgot their name, but this deity splits the sea so that the fish um, is stopped in their tracks and they can um, they can capture the fish but that was so crazy and oh the taxi driver is is goaded he helps the the Seigitai so much with transporting them to all like the different locations every time they get a call he's there to bring everyone so he's amazing but this is really cool as well. They enter into this underground bunk. Very detailed. I think some of the most detailed uh, work in terms of like um, the pen work out of this series here. And then you contrast it with his very simple face. Yeah, that was volume two. Oh, there was, yeah, there was a specific one here as well. Really cool. Um, Face spread. I believe this is their yeah. So this is the Justice Train. This is the train that the uh, Seigita use, but it is being hijacked at the moment, and so it continues into the next volume, Volume Three, which I believe. Yep. Yeah, so there's this little. This is the train model set or train design, and yes, I do believe this volume is where they fight against this like old people's like the elderly association something like that so the train has been taken away this guy i believe is also part of the elderly association really weird dude they follow him and train more intruders into their base i believe his name is fuchi he gets uh gets beat up unfortunately they get tormented, they fight, that sort of thing. Naked, naked lady? 
I guess, just running out. Weird stuff, yeah. Naked lady, old naked man, just running away, beating people up. I really love those like motion lines as well. This one's a really cool page. We've got the entire crew together. Yep. Okay. And this is where they they encounter the uh, the elderly association, who are weirdly powerful physically like powerful he knocks out one of the members Kezaru goes to fight but they manage to escape this elderly woman and man on this like train cart thing but yeah they they are weirdly um physically fit and so they steal the train and there's this whole journey of trying to to fight them on the train to take it back that sort of thing but i believe i think the, the elderly association because i'm only up to volume three i've only i haven't started volume four has been the biggest enemy out of everything which is so funny you've got one of the elderly women like being transported by crows super crazy stuff um yeah what else happens here i don't remember oh yeah they're at like a a gig, a live gig. One of the elderly women rush into the crowd. They knock out the guitarist, and there's a really sick scene where Motoko, in an attempt to to follow her, she crowd surfs all the way up <laughs> to the stage, which is like the coolest thing ever. Here's a close up of her just crowd surfing to the front. Uh, it's so funny. Um, and then this, I, I don't remember who this person was. There's so many things that happened in this series. Uh, it's been a while since I've read it, but they continue to chase that person, I believe. But yeah, more fights, more fights as well. And that's the end of the third volume. And so I'll just do a quick flip through of the fourth volume because I haven't read this yet. It'll be a bit of a spoiler for me, but just for you guys. Uh, oh yeah, these also came in here, little flyer things in different languages. I'll show them all just in case you guys read Chinese, Korean. Uh, is this Russian? I think so. Yep, so these came in, came in there. Um, yeah, I'll do a quick flip through. I'm going to flick through without look, looking at it. You guys can look at it because um, I haven't read it yet. I don't want to spoil myself. So just going to do a quick run through these pages. I'm not looking at my screen right now. But you can also tell that the art changed um, from volume one to, you know, even volume three. It started in 2005, ended in 2011. You can see that the lines are a lot more, like, cleaner, they're more defined um, than, than Volume 1. So, that's pretty cool. Six years though, that's like, a lot of time to improve your art. Yeah, this is Chip, uh, the real life version. So that was Seigitai, I think a very iconic, in my eyes at least, a very iconic Heta Uma. Uh, series. Unfortunately, not in, um, not translated in any other languages, but feel free to pick it up in Japanese as well because there's not much text. You can very much tell what is going on without reading. Uh, it is a lot of like visual, uh, visual storytelling. So yeah, also love the spines. Love the covered spines. I, I love anything rainbow. Um, and I feel like Yuka did a great job with designing and drawing these covers. But yeah, that was um, Seiki Tai. Amazing Mary Sing series, I just need to finish off the last volume. Okay, so let's move on to the next book. Here we've got a hardcover book, um, which is titled Jacaranda by 
um, Shiryagari Kotobuki. So Shiryagari was serialized in Garo for, um, I believe, the later the later stages of Garo when Heta Uma popped up more, maybe in the eighties when he started off. I'm not too entirely sure, uh, but he was in the later stage of Garo and was also in um, the early stages of the Axe magazine as well. So this work here is one one story, one time of one story. It was published in 2005, so it's very similar to, um, to uh, Segitai, like Oto Yuka. Just because um, I, I believe uh, Axe, the magazine, started off in the early 2000s, so um, that's where you get a lot of the those early Heta Uma artists like uh, Kotobuki, you've got Goto Yuka, uh, Hanakuma Yusaku as well was in um, Axe. So this one is one of my favorite works uh, in general. And some people might disagree with me because this, um, this book is very interesting. So I'll just explain it, what happens at the start here. We get introduced to um, just an old man on a train and he seems to be a bit sick is a bit feeble at the moment um but people start making fun of him on the train and this woman here she goes crazy on him for some reason no reason at all he didn't provoke anything and she bashes him saying like and, and all that stuff keeps kicking him which is like extremely brutal tells him to die you know, shine, shine, shine. um and it's just opening off this this tanglebond with a man, an elderly man getting beaten for no reason at all, uh, to the point of dying on a train. And we reset to this open space of the city, which will be important. Um, and then we cut back to like a little part of the city where, you know, there's just news reports um, going on. This, this double page spread looks very like dystopian. And then the plot starts to begin. So it's actually a very simple plot and premise of uh, this book, Jacaranda. We see a little seed or a little root starting to grow from the ground that uh, uh, a child points out to his teacher, her teacher. And it begins to grow very, very quickly. So normal life, daily routine goes on, but we notice in the city that it begins to disrupt um, everyone around it. So cars get tripped up by the, the little cracks in the ground from the seeds. You've got people noticing that, oh, these plants are popping out of nowhere. And so we're wondering what is happening? Why are these plants growing around uh, so quickly? And why are they so widespread? And they grow to a monstrous size, so it's like taller than the people now in the span of a couple of minutes. It starts to infiltrate houses, begins to break foundations, collapse those houses, the land begins to fall. Um, you can see here that the house has just fallen into the river next to it. And so we see real destruction beginning to happen. And that is actually the entire plot of Jacaranda. There is this, as you can probably tell from the, the title, a Jacaranda growing in the city, but this Jacaranda tree begins to wreak havoc on the town just by growing. It begins to destroy um, infrastructure, it begins to start fires because, you know, gas pipes are being destroyed, explosions everywhere, and there is a lot of death. So these I believe 200 pages or so it might sound weird but the entire book is just showcasing the destruction no other plot points just going around the city showcasing the destruction of this jacaranda tree and it becomes a, a pretty much a nationwide disaster at this point everything is being destroyed and people are dying a really like hellish imagery there and for me, when I was reading 
this book um it was so vivid um because all it is is just going through the city seeing different scenes of the tree destroying and killing people you know it, it derails this train there's big explosions everywhere this is the state of the city just from this tree growing and its roots uh hitting everything around them in the city that's the entire plot that's what the people are reacting to they're running away there's panic everywhere but especially towards the later half of the book it gets super violent because um kotobuki portrays a lot of the the deaths very full-on a lot of these very extreme um, scenarios explosions you know all these people inside the subway you've got a fire um, that comes through and it, it kills all of them it is very full on. You've got uh, explosions happening everywhere. It continues and just fire, fire and fire. And the way Kotobuki draws the explosions, like here, especially with the shadows, and oh, I love this little panel here. Those, those explosions there in the building. Like this, for example, this is what I mean by so vivid. When I was reading this, um, I was like picturing or like, imagining the screams of all these people just because this is the main thing that's shown in the book you know, all these people crying out but being killed and it's brutal it's very brutal and there's a lot of scenes throughout this book that showcase that this for example you know someone burning uh, under some rubble people dead everywhere and if you think back to the start of the story you could sort of interpret it as maybe some, you know, uh, some retribution, some, what's it, divine punishment. You know, that woman who was beating up that man who, who killed the elderly man for no reason on that train. Maybe the jacaranda can be seen as like a, a sign of that divine retribution. Um, and th that's like a possible interpretation of it or the interpretation I had. Because you can see uh, like a karmic... Um, sort of cycle? No. Like a catalyst. That, that, that was the catalyst to all of this suffering. So yeah, I'll just flick through the rest of these. It comes quiet for a little bit, but the entire city, and I mean the entire city, I believe this is in Tokyo, um, gets destroyed. Everyone is dying. So you notice how there's nothing else happening. It's just destruction. Scenes of destruction. And the tree grows even bigger. So this is like a Godzilla-sized tree. He was stuck on the building. He can't escape. Jumping down. They're on the bridge. No one can escape. Bridge collapses. Extremely brutal scenes. Last goodbyes. More and more people burning. It's, oh man. Like, it's a lot. This is a lot. The way, like, I love how Kotobuki's style is his art style. It, it works so well. Because again, this video is Heta Uma. He is a quite a well-known Heta Uma artist. But the way he draws the, the pure, like, pain on the people's faces. And, like, here you've got, like, a very simplified, you know, like, brush strokes type of thing where... It's showing like the the inferno, and again we jump back to the citywide destruction of Tokyo. Just people dead everywhere, and these people are the remnants, those who survived, looking at the city from afar. And. I'm not sure if you can see here, but these, you see, these are the branches of the tree. So that's how big it's gotten. That's the, the city line. And up there are the branches of the tree. And so we come to the final part of the story where it uh, the, the sun rises, it's daytime, and they see the scale of this tree. And the destruction it's caused. And 
it rains all of a sudden and all the fires stop. So it's like a sort of reset. And then finally, this tree starts sprouting its flowers. So at the end of all of your destruction, we get this beautiful tree that blooms over all of them. And they just collapse and start praying to this jacaranda tree, which is like such a insane sight, but that's how big the tree is. That's Tokyo on the ground. And that's the jacaranda tree. There you go. That's the tree there. I think that's the rest of the city. And the story ends there. So this one was like a lot of people, well, I'm not sure, I'm, I haven't really met anyone who's read this one. Um, well, I know one person, but um, I wouldn't blame anyone if they said that this story was weird or boring because all that really happens is just a, a tree sp sprouts and um, havoc ensues and we have like the blooming of the tree at the end but it was such a visceral experience reading this entire story for me for like 200 300 pages of just pure destruction and and death and violence and explosions it was so vivid in my head when i was reading through all of this that it's just stuck with me extremely memorable the way that uh, kotobuki changes his style to match you know, the extremity of the events as well. Um, it's one of my favorite works from Kotobuki. I haven't read too much from him. I've read uh, some shorts of his in Axe, his um, Twin Uncles series. That's like a comedic series. But this one is not comedic. Uh, it is very serious, actually. And um, it's complete opposite to what I've seen. But it is one of my favorite um, stories just because of how simple and how visceral of experience it was when reading um so yeah i highly recommend it again another work that doesn't require you to understand the the, the words the japanese it is a purely or well, mostly a visual um storytelling experience but yeah that was jacaranda by kotobuki shiriagari another uh, hetauma artist that i love and so we come to this last book called Tarako Cream. Uh, Tarako means Kodro, so Kodro Cream by Kazuhiro Watanabe. And I just have some notes here. So Watanabe, he uh, was, he did serialize in Garo in uh, the later stages of Garo. Um, he actually also studied under Akasegawa Genpei as well. So. I'm just reading this off Annie list, but in 1975, uh, Shinbo Minami, who was also serialized in Gara as well, invited him to join um, Seido, and he then later became an editor, and an editor-in-chief for Gara for a year and a half. And after that, he went and, done, uh, and did his own freelance stuff. Um, so that's some information about him. This one was a more recent read for me. Um, to be honest, it's not my favorite Heta Uma work. It's not his his works are is they're okay. Honestly, I think they're okay. Not my favorite uh, mangaka or Heta Uma uh, stories that I've read, but some of them are good. So these are the the stories in this book here, and I'll just be going through a couple. So the first one is the titular story, Tarako Cream, um, which I actually didn't understand really. Some of these stories were a bit hard to understand. But here is um, it in color. I really don't know what's going on here. It's, I believe they're selling something at a shop. And this scene is like under the shop or something. Yeah, I can't really comment on this because I didn't understand fully what it meant. Um, but this story on the left is called uh, My School. And it follows this girl who doesn't want to go to school because um, because of the uniform. She hates the uniform. 
essentially. And so she's like, oh, I don't really want to go, that sort of thing. But she's forced to go to school. And here they are at school. When she gets to school, she gets a bit annoyed and she starts prote protesting. She doesn't want to study. She talks about how nothing matters in the universe. And um, that makes the teacher get mad. And that's the end of that. So that one was, that was all right. The next story we have here is called The Mystery of the Repeating Gun. Or I guess the machine gun. Um, it's following, oh, by the way, the, this, this character here with the glasses is also named Wantanabe. So it's like, a, I guess, a self-insert character for him. Um, so this story looks at this village of like, uh, who for some reason had a machine gun. Uh, don't know why. So with this machine gun, they take over the village and they, I think they kill one of the elders and kidnap one of the, the women. Um, and so our two main characters here, they get word of this and they go to help out the village. So they break in, take the key, but they get tricked and fall into a trap. So here they are stuck in the hole. But at the bottom, what they realize is as, well, they, they're trying to drown them pretty much. Um, so they're in water at the moment and they break through a wall and get out. And so they begin fighting and they win. They free the hostage and he gets a hold of the gun, the machine gun, Gatling gun, whatever, and starts wreaking havoc as well. Um, so yeah, that was that story. Next one, you've got Otosan no Neji. So Neji meaning screw. Uh, so my dad's screw. Um, so this one here is a boy with his dad here. And what's weird, no, not, not what's weird. Uh, the, the secret is that the dad is actually a robot. He can pick up very large things he helps the son with the homework. Um, he falls down and trips, but the son saves him with some robot CPR sort of thing because he's low in energy. And it's a very wholesome relationship between the son and the dad. The dad feels like he's finally accepted. You know, he can wear, he doesn't have to wear that, that head of hair. But then what happens is the son goes home and finds out that his, his mum had been sleeping with another robot and uh, gets mad. So he goes out again and the dad comes back home. The mum gets mad at him, doesn't want him around anymore. So she calls up um, the company that made him, I believe. And so they send a helicopter to catch him because I believe she just reported him as like being rogue. And so he's taken away while the son there is waiting for his father to help him with his little like project. So a bit of a sad, uh, sad ending there. Um, but yeah, it's to be honest, like, again, as I said, I, these stories were okay for me, not the best, um, in my opinion, but it's good being exposed to different types of Heta Uma works and Heta Uma Mangaka. I'm not going to go through all of the stories because um, I'm just going to go through maybe two or three more, but just to give an idea of the, the art style. This story here is called uh, Elementary School Diary. Who We've got uh, two boys in elementary school. And they, they talk a bit. Here's like an upside down view of the school. And one of them, I believe, says that they have like a, like a Tetsujin 28 robot at home. Um... And he thinks it's lying, but no, it's true. He actually has a Tetsujin 28 robot at home. Um, but when they go home, they find... So it says here that it's in there. They find... What did they find again? Oh. I think their dad is just like, go outside or something like that. But yeah, it was just funny seeing like a Tetsujin in, in the manga. It, it sticks out so much. 
But yeah, and uh, I'll just do a quick flip through of the rest. The rest of the stories weren't too interesting in my opinion. It was, yeah, it was pretty eh. I think I'm, I'm okay. Um, Kazuhiro had also, oh my god. Yeah, there was like a Hitler thing as well. It was like a parody on, on um, that. But yeah, it's, um, he has another Tankobon, which I was thinking about getting, but after reading this, I'm like, ah, uh, not my thing anymore. So I'll just stick with this one here. That was a bit racy. And we've got a last story titled Poison Radio. Uh, so a neighbor's mother is very paranoid about radio waves being poisonous to her. So she like tin foils the entire house and it's weird. She's like super paranoid and the neighbors are getting uh, confused and stuff is with her daughter as well. But it's just the narrator observing them do that. Uh, but yeah. That was the end of Tarako Cream. Here are the dates of when they were published. This book was published in 1980. Um, and a lot of these works were, yep, between 77 and 80. So that was Tarako Cream. Not my favorite Heta Uma work, but it's cool having a variety of Heta Uma to, to read. So that's going to be the end of the video, a short one on a couple of Heta Uma works by Kazuhiro Watanabe, Shiriagari Kotobuki, and of course, um, Kotoyuka. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.